Hello friends, my name is Martha Romero. My Indian name is Kwatebe, that means rainbow, and I'm from the Pueblo of Nambe. I'm a micaceous potter, and I've been doing micaceous clay for about 10 years. Um, I also learned uh, pottery making from my mother when I was a small child. Um, I've learned a lot of traditional methods from Poe Cultural Center, and to Poe, I'm so grateful that they have these classes to teach native artists, as well as the instructors. I'm so grateful to them um, for taking the time to teach me a lot of the traditional methods um, that I wouldn't have been able to learn. So I'm going to go through quickly some of the processing, hand processing that I do uh, when making clay. So this is what the clay looks like when I dig it out. It's got a lot of shine to it because it's got a lot of mica in the clay. And this is what the mica looks like in its raw form. It's actually layers and it flakes off a lot. You might have, might have seen this sometimes when you're out hiking. But it comes in layers um, with quartz in between. And through rain runoff, it gets into the clay. And what's really great about it too is it acts as a temper. And so I don't need to do any kind of an added temper, and the pottery is really strong enough to cook in or serve in. Um, so I'll soak the clay in water. And this clay here um, is not typically what I actually gather. They're usually really big pieces. So I'll soak them in water for a couple of days, and then I'll break them down, and I'll take out all the big sticks and rocks, and then I run it through a sieve, and then I'll pour it onto newspaper, and um, a sheet to absorb the remaining water and then I'll wait several days and I'm looking for this sort of a consistency so this is what the clay looks like when it's ready it actually holds form really well and it's not too sticky so I'll be able to start um, building with it so a little bit later on I'm going to go through some of the hand building techniques some coil building techniques as well um, so this is what I call a puki, and a puki is a support, a support bowl. And what it does is it helps me as I'm building uh, the pot to keep its shape. So I'm putting a lot of pressure on it as I'm building, and it's still wet, and the water runs to the bottom. This will support it from just flattening out. Um, and so this is a piece of pottery that's already been made, and it's dry. And so from that point, what I'll do is I'll go and gather some sandstone. And with sandstone, I'm looking for a real fine sandstone, so that way it doesn't make big gouges in my pot. And I'll go over the pot with the sandstone, um, trying to get it as smooth as possible. And from there, I'll do a fine sanding with sandpaper. So I'll do a couple of, of passes with the fine sandpaper. And then I'll wash it down with a sponge and let it dry. And then it's ready for me to go ahead and start doing a slip and uh, polishing on it. So this is some of the slip. And the slip is actually just the clay. But I run it through a really, really fine sieve. So you get a lot of mica flakes and it's real, real fine. So I'll mix this up and I'll do three coats onto my pot. So I'll do uh, a coat and let it dry, a second coat and let it dry. And then on the third coat, I'll do it in sections. So I'll wet it with the slip and then I'll actually stone polish it just in that area. If I try to go on a dried area, what it's going to do is it's going to scratch it. So that's the reason for doing it sections at a time. So once it's um, all polished, then I'll get a rag and I'll do some really fine polishing and then it's ready for firing. So I'll usually preheat it in the oven for about three hours, um, getting it used to the heat. And I do actually two kinds of firings outdoors, and one of them is an oxidation firing. So the oxidation firing, what it does is it's an open pit, and I have some pictures of the open pit here. And so I'll dig out a pit, and I'll start heating the ground. So for like about an hour and a half, I'm putting wood in there. I'm getting the ground really, really hot. And then I, um, I'm also heating up the pots around the pit. And then I'll let it burn down to hot coals. I'll put the pottery inside and I'll set the whole top on fire. So uh, before I can take it out, it needs to be cool enough. If I try to rush the process um, and try to take them out too quickly, then um, they may crack. They may go into shock and crack. 
So with this type of flowering, because it's getting a lot of oxygen like flowing through the pit, the natural color comes out. And a little bit later on, I'm going to show you what those potteries look like that are oxidation fired. Um, I also do reduction firings and I'll fire in a metal box like you see here and I'll heat up the ground the same way and what I'm wanting to do is, is turn the pottery black. So I'll heat the ground and everything and put the pots inside and I'll use a combustible inside the box um, with the potteries in there and it has to be really fine so it'll be something like sawdust or cow manure that I've ran through a, a sieve and I'll put that inside and I'll set the whole outside on fire and then wait till it cools down and just open up the box ever so slowly so that I don't shock it until it's cool enough to, to remove the pottery out of the box. And I'll show you some pictures of those, um, I mean some actual pots a little bit later on. So meet me back here shortly and I'm going to show you some coil building techniques. Okay, so here we have a pot that I already started in like a larger pookie. And all I really did was start wedging the clay and that's just pushing the clay onto itself, get it into a ball. And then I flatten that ball um, and then I start compressing the clay. Um, so when it's in a big flat tortilla, compressing, all that is is pressing from the center out and pushing down and compressing the clay. And then once I've done that, then I put it inside the pookie and I start bringing up the walls on the pookie. So this piece already has one coil on it, so I'm going to show you how I attach a coil. So I start by just wetting the wall on the inside, and then I start with a really long coil. And the coil I kind of leave it somewhat uneven, and then I just start rolling it in there. And pushing it up against the wall. And then I'll just start pushing it a little bit more against the wall. So I'm not putting a ton of pressure on it. So this is what it looks like when I've attached it. Okay, and then I'm going to start by um, attaching the coil to the existing wall. So I'm going to press from the center down. And start pushing that coil against the existing wall. So that's what it looks like on the inside. And then I'm going to start attaching the top part of it to the coil that I just added. And I'm supporting it on the inside as I'm putting pressure on it. And now I'm just going to start smoothing this out and smoothing it out a little bit. Okay, so then I'm going to start thinning out the wall and I'm going to start pinching. And I'm going to start pinching from the bottom of where the coil got added and working my way up to the top. So I start at the bottom and I just pinch all the way around. And it's uh, consistency is the key on this because that's how you're going to get more even walls is by just pinching, pinching once and turning. Then I move my fingers up to the center and pinch there. And I'm not putting too much pressure. And then I move my fingers up to the top. So this is what it looks like when it's all pinched out, and then I'm going to start working that um, working that coil to the wall. So I'll start with the inside, and I take a serrated edge, 
and I'll start just working that clay, the coil from the inside. So this is starting to get it back evened out because it has all those pressing marks from your fingertips. And I only go around once and that's what it looks like. And then I'm going to use a little bit uh, smoother tool, kind of hard rib, and I'm going to start cleaning those lines off. So then that's it kind of cleaned and then I'm going to do the compression that I said earlier. So I'm just doing it from the point I added the coil. I'm just always supporting on the outside. I'm just pressing with my fingers and pushing the clay kind of up and trying to work out any air pockets. Because if you don't work out your air pockets, what happens is that during the firing, um, they'll pop off. So this is what it looks like when you fire it and you leave some air in there, it'll pop off during the firing. So I'll usually do compression a few times and then I'm going to do the same thing on the outside. I'm going to use the serrated edge, I'm going to use the flat edge, and then my fingertips. And then I'm going to use the flat one, take off the lines. And then I'm going to do the compression. So I'm just going to start pressing it from the bottom up with my fingers, always supporting. That's how you add a coil.